Make sure we're good. Gerald says we're good. So let's get rolling. Uh, we won't be too long, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, I want to go over the uh, algo and also um, the two setups that we look for. We look for the FCR and also the momentum setups. I want to show you how you can uh, uh, play the indicator by itself or the algo by itself or a combination of both. And we're going to be getting into this of uh, you guys are going to be getting an update where you can, it's going to show the FZR and it's also going to show, um, it's also going to show the momentum uh, setup uh, also on the same chart um, that will produce an arrow. So uh, these arrows will automatically come up. So let's go over the indicator first. The indicator will show, uh, hey Chris, if you can answer, um, if you can answer Gerald's uh, private message, that'd be great. He's asking for you. Hey, no, no problem. Um, so the, the indicator, basically, you don't have to run the uh, automated version. Um, you can run just the indicator if you'd like, if you like manually uh, hitting your entries. Uh, this is the Fed news this afternoon. Obviously, the Fed news is big news. Um, so these arrows will come up automatically and fire when you have a qualified one, an FZR trade, or two, a momentum setup. And the difference in them is um, we've seen, I think I did five videos on this already, so we're not going to get in a detail with that. Uh, you can replay those videos, the difference between an FZR and a momentum. But basically, an FZR is a full retracement below 20 for a buy and above 80 for a sell. And then a momentum setup says, hey, I do not get below 20 on a pullback. And an extreme uh, momentum would be I would stay above 80 on a buy. So this one would be categorized um, after the Fed would be a momentum setup because we pulled back, the oscillator pulled back. We never got below 20. And then we had an arrow will automatically fire for you guys. And that was a possible entry point for you. So this is called a momentum setup. That's called a momentum setup. We call that a MOMO in the room. So we did several videos on this at Day Trading the Futures under videos. That is a momentum setup, which is called a MOMO. And then we have a, let me get a little bigger for you. We have an extreme MOMO. And what that says is if I'm in a buy mode, meaning I have a green ATR. You don't want to go against your ATR, by the way. If your ATR is green, you're looking for buy setups. If the ATR is red, you're looking for sell setups. So that is a MOMO buy because the ATR is green. It switched over to green. And I'll tell you when to start looking at trades after the news in a second. And then the market starts moving up. And then we had an arrow that will automatically print here for you at uh, just after 2 o'clock, almost uh, 201. This is what's called an extreme MOMO. Now, an extreme MOMO is where... The market is just blasting off to one side, and this is called extreme MOMO. The reason being is, is that you're getting this price action that's moving the market to the upside. As it's moving to the upside, you get a pullback where counter -trade traders are coming in. And right when we get that uh, qualified uh, reversal bar, this arrow will automatically print on your chart, and that provides another possible entry for you. That is an extreme MOMO because on the pullback, the oscillator doesn't go below 80. So a regular MOMO says on a buy setup, it says that I need to stay above 20. And then on a pullback, and then a, so on this buy, see you, you came up, I got a pullback, my MAs are not crossed, meaning they're have spread. You don't want them to cross or this arrow would not print anyway. So these arrows will print when A, the moving averages are going in the direction of the trend. The ATR has to be green or you would not get a green arrow. And the oscillator on a MOMO trade has to stay above 20. Uh, for a regular MOMO or extreme MOMO, it has to stay above 80. So then the market moves up. We'll get into around two minutes after the Fed, a minute and a half after the Fed news. Market's already moved drastically on the move. And we get this pullback, start seeing red reversal bars all the way down. And then we have an arrow that automatically prints. 
on a reversal here for another possible entry. What this is called, this is called a FZR, this is called a full retracement or full zone retracement. And this is called a full zone because now the oscillator below has went below 20 and the green ATR says we only like to buy retracements. So that would be what's called a full zone retracements. So th these are the two trades. It doesn't matter what markets. A lot of traders trade a lot of different types of markets. Um, many traders don't even trade the ES. They won't even log into the trading room. They will trade on their own charts and trade different futures. Uh, traders are looking at stocks with it. Um, you can even trade the crypto market with this. Works great with Bitcoin. Um, you know, you can trade pretty much currency. You can even trade index futures. What really whatever or indexes also whatever you're looking at. These are the two setups. You're going to get a either a full retracement, an FCR, full zone retracement in the market. That's where it likes to come down to my zones and and uh, rebound out of them. Full zone retracements, which is FZR. That's one type of setup you're looking for all day long. And the second type of setup that's going to occur is a momentum setup, or what I call a MOMO. So what I did over the years of trading, I try to narrow this down as much as possible. And these are the two setups that happen on a daily basis. They happen over and over and over and over again. They just repeat themselves. And this is something where um, it's either going to be into a full zone retracement, a full pullback, deep retracement. But the market is hot, and I'll show you how to look for these momentum setups. If the market is hot, which obviously the Fed made it hot today, this afternoon, then you're going to get uh, you're going to get number two, this momentum setup, which is called a MOMO. So on our charts, we have the we have it set up already. We have two. If you look in the trading room, I have this set up already. I have two time frames. I have a uh, Uni Rinko 12020, a larger time frame over here to really see where the pullbacks are and the possible momentum setups. It caught this giant momentum setup into the close where the institutional traders and algorithms start adjusting their jockeying their positions. Um, and here is it's a 1551, then it caught the one up at 1545. So we show this as a as our largest time frame in the room because this is moment this is a large time frame so every since three o'clock you just my algo said short I mean we had red ATR all the way down and it caught this giant momentum move here they are automatically printed now in the room I want to update you guys I'm only showing momentum arrows so this arrow automatically fired today in the live trading room that fired exactly at that bar and that bar when it closed it fired there it fired there, it fired there, and that was live for all you members that were in the room today. Those were all live arrows that fired when those, that bar closed. So because it was momentum, the momentum, the oscillator not, did not get above 80, uh, did not get above 80 here, did not get above 80 there, did not get above 80, did not get above 80. So all these setups that I show in the room are mo mo arrows. So if you elect just to look at the ES in the room, you're only going to see momentum arrows. You're not going to see FZRs. With the update, you can I have them on both. It shows arrows on the FZRs and the momentum, which I'll show you. Um, and it shows every single FZR and every single MOMO. Okay. So the FZRs are it has to hit the zone where the MOMOs it does not. It just the oscillator has to stay below 80. It's got to meet the criteria of being with the ATR direction, and the moving averages have to be in the same direction as my ATR. If that happens, these are automatically going to fire, which they did, and they fired here. You can see on the upside, they fired the upside. Had some great ones at the upside too. These are all room trades, by the way. Caught that swing, caught that swing, that swing. So these will fire off the larger time frame. Caught that huge short, uh, almost into three o'clock there that fired in the room today fire in the room so my point is the ones that are firing in the room are momentum only all right now the largest time frame like i said that i show in the room is on the 12020 then i come over here and i show a shorter time frame because after the 12020 
starts rolling over, the smaller time frames are great for momentum setups coming out of an FCR. So this is a 1.13.13 uni, and it's the same thing though. It's only going to show momentum setups. Now the one thing I want to touch base on before I move further, I was talking to Terrence a little bit about this. This is a perfect example. What I was talking about is a tweezer. Terrence, you asked about when these two dojis come together and my arrows automatically print in the room. What does it mean? This is a high probability continuation trade that it's going to go southbound on the Greyhound relatively quickly because I got an indecision in price and a downtrend, and then I got a momentum setup that follows it right afterwards. This is a, tw a tweezer Momo. I love these setups. We talk about them in the room all the time. You see two dojis come together, then the arrow prints. You're probably going to see a nice continuation. Uh, those are the ones that Terrence asked me today. And Terrence, hopefully that answers your question. Um, when the tweezers come together and you get the arrow, you get that nice continuation. And that's what I was talking about. Um, here's another one right here, tweezer. Um, it didn't, that was a tweezer full retracement. Momentum oscillator got above 80. That's why it didn't fire. But that answers your question as far as that goes. So if you see those come up, um, what, what I like to do is uh, the top momentum setups that come up on these FZR, I mean on these momentum trades, is coming out of a zone. So you come out of a zone, these smaller time frames fire these momentum setups. I'm going to show you a little technique I like to look at. Once that happens on the first retracement pullback, we'll get into that a little bit later in the call here. But um, uh, this is what I show in the room. I just want to show you what I show in the room. Uh, I show the larger time frame right there to show full retracements and also uh, momentum setups. And I got a smaller time frame here. You don't have to use these time frames. Um, you can use any time frame that you want. You can use larger time frames for position trading, um, or you can use smaller time frames for scalping. All right, and I'll show you how to do that later also. Uh, this far left chart, um, we know that once we get all six red, six red, six green, if you get an opposite color speed bar, that means the market should push hard in that direction. In other words, if I roll over and get below green, I turn all red. If you're looking for opposite color speed bars, we did a whole video on this. This is a possible top, which it called rollover. It was a big major heads up that that should roll over right there. Big heads up. We got videos on that. But you can see when that gets going and you get the Momo set up, you get a lot of, a lot of movement. Um, I sent charts as far as that goes. Uh, same way to the upside. Um, you're looking for the upside or downside. If you get all six that are red, look at the momentum in this market. Look at all six ATRs are red. That's telling you to cherry pick the trades that turn green only. That's catching the rolling position traders. Once these green bars starts forming, it gives you a big heads up. Look for a major reversal. You're going to look for an FCR or you're going to look for a momentum setup. Uh, usually it's an FCR. But sometimes it's momentum if the market's really weak. So that chart over the far left tells you when, hey, the market's looking to do one thing. It's looking to do this. It's looking to go vertical. You know, we're going vertical. We're not going horizontal. So it lets you know that these opposite color speed bars in that chart, when they form, look for an FCR pull-in uh, for an arrow or look for an arrow on the momentum setup. Because if you look at this, it called the major swing there. It called the major swing there, major swing there, major swing, major swing, major swing. So, you know, when you get these, it all turn red, um, you know, uh, called that big swing, this one, this one. So, you know, if it turns green, it's the opposite. Then you're going to look, if it turns all green, then you're going to look for the opposite color speed bars red, looking for a swing to pull you in, an arrow to fire, and you'll look for the arrows to fire automatically when you have uh, opposite color green to fire on the other side. I like the first two waves, but you can tell you turn all six green, all six red, look for green. Um, your speed bars to fire, that called that swing high there, called this M top there. So you can tell that this chart's invaluable for catching momentum moves. It's just it's a wonderful chart. I keep it real skinny over here because I just like when it turns all red or all green. Um, you can put it on a separate monitor if you want. And then I have these two charts to help us out. But the, the key is is that uh, um, is that you can put all this on one chart if you want. Uh, this is after the news comes out. You can select what time frame that you want to trade off of. Meaning, if you want to go a larger time frame, 
uh, where you're only looking for a couple swing plays and you don't want a lot of arrows to fire on, on momentum setups or full retracements, you can do that. Um, you know, you can, we like the uni bars and the Simrenko bars to call the momentum and then the uni bars look for a possible entry. And this is an uni, this is an uni bar. So when you're looking for these, we have these workspaces already set up as far as the unis go. But what I like to educate, look for the big time frame, your large, larger time frames to look for your extended moves because these are not small moves. I mean, this momentum right after the move, that was potential, what, 38, uh, it's just big moves, 30, 58, and just that little swing there is all the way up to, you know, that big move up to uh, the 90 level. So when you see these um, on larger time frames, it lets you get into the smaller time frames on the way up, which I'll show you how you can use a larger time frame and check down to a smaller time frame for entries. So these arrows automatically fire in the room right now on just momentum setups. The full retracement setups on the update of getting out to you traders, it will fire on the full retracements and the momentum setups both. All right, so it'll fire here and here on every single one that fires off, and you're good to go. So as we moved on, um, for, for, and secondly, is that when you trade news, okay, do not trade, in, in, I educate traders, don't trade the first 30 seconds. And I've, ever since that we've opened a trading room, I've, I've been really adamant about telling traders not to do that. The first 30 seconds is like this, all right? You're going to get this, and it's going to be every time. Make sure you're flat, there's no positions, the market goes crazy. And it will do that for the first 30 seconds. It whips all, whip, 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 whip. I don't care if you're using a small time frame, larger time frame, you know, this 30 seconds, uh, you know, and you can go a minute, and some traders can go five minutes if you want to be more conservative, Terrence. You know, that's just all depending on your risk tolerance. You know, some traders like five minutes. The, the least amount that you should do is 30 seconds if you want to get into some momentum setups because you get this. Um, some traders like a minute, five minutes, but just no matter what, the first 30, don't even look for it. So this is after the first 30 seconds, and let's move through. I'm going to move through you to the close and show you all these trades into the close, and then I'm going to show you how we can have strategies on getting into this momentum or full retracements, or we can use the auto to auto in when these arrows automatically fire off. And what the auto will do, it already has your stops put in, already has your targets put in, already has a trail put in. So right when you see a setup coming up, you can, you can turn the auto on by double clicking on it. And um, it's something where it fires up immediately and it will do these trades for you. So I'll go over that in a second how you can implement that. But using a larger time frame will get your mind right um, as far as these different uh, zones that should be that we should be looking at. Uh, yes, th this you can do them on uh, really any time frame that you want, Ron. It just depends what time frame that you want to do. Um, if you use larger time frame, it's going to encompass larger stops. You smaller time frame, it's going to be more trades. So when you get this where all these zeros are firing on the update, I mean the FCRs and this, they, they'll fire together. You decide what time frame is best for you. You know, if you want to trade off of larger time frames, you can do that. And if not, you're good to go. Will both FCR and MMOs re-enter partial positions? Yes. So I'll go over the auto in a second, Terrence. This is just manually why these come up, these arrows come up. And we'll go over the auto questions in a second. Okay. So let's go through and we'll go through the price action. So then we come through, and this is, re this is 30 seconds after the news. And we come through, we just can't, this is a full zone retracement. And then we come into what? We come into two FCRs because what? It got below 20, low 20. It's about five minutes after the news event. So a lot of you want to trade just after five minutes, right? You let it sell down. Now you're starting to trade right after here. So now most traders after news, they'll wait till this. They'll wait till this comes up. Now they're looking for setups, right? So as we move along then, and we'll go into the close, we'll start moving. Um, and we'll start looking for FZRs and momentum. No momentum because of the uh, because of the moving average cross. We're getting choppy, still choppy, and then still choppy. No setups, and then we start rolling into trades. 
So then about 37 minutes after the news, as far as this time frame goes, we started firing off some trades. This is a FCR. The momentum is down. We got red, red, um, you got your red ATRs. Your oscillator is above 80. You're getting a retracement. This arrow will automatically fire. Uh, this arrow fires. This is an FCR. So this is an FCR trade because it's not below 80. All right, so that's an FCR trade, full zone retracement with an arrow, and it's not above, it's not above your arrow. So then we keep moving down. There's an FCR trade. Now this is an FCR arrow. Now this is where the rollover happens. Now I want you to watch this, and this is a larger time frame, of course, but I think you got to understand how this works. If you see, if you see we're coming down, and then all of a sudden you get a green reversal bar, right? And these dots start printing the opposite direction. That is a sign for a stop because you should see a nice move in the other direction. And so that's what happened. You get a full retracement and you get into an FCR trade for retracement. You get a move up. And then we get uh, nothing on a pullback here. And then we get the arrows up fire. And as far as this time frame goes, uh, the arrows that fired here on a full retracement it's below 20, full retracement below 20, FZR, full retracement below 20. We had a momentum that tried to get momentum. If it turns momentum and goes right back red, obviously that is not a uh, momentum trade according to this time frame uh, to stop out. And then you get into the sell signals around 1443, uh, FZR arrow fired there, FZR arrow fired here. FCR, 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 which is one after another one, and then we get the momentum. Now, the one thing that, that, that I like is that when you're doing momentum, especially if you're just coming up to the first momentum trade, is a lot of the great momentum trades happen after a qualified FCR. So if you get, you come up into, you know, you come up into your zone, right? You see the zone, and then it retraces out of it, and we're coming back down. It turned red. If you see this pattern, and it comes back up, sets so a lower high, and you get a momentum setup. That's going to be your best momentum setup of an FCR after an FCR. It, it happened this morning also. I know I, Leo, Derek, you caught that. Good job. I saw you caught this one. But it was this pattern. Uh, they, they recognized it got into the uh, zone. Leo and Derek, the members this morning, it went down. It set a lower high, fired an FCR on the, uh, I mean, fired a momentum setup on the lower time frame, and then it just got cranked into the downside. So that was a nice trade. But that's what typically happens with momentum setups. So then we get moving uh, to the downside, and we have another beautiful um, um, momentum setup. It was right on the edge of it, fired a momentum. But then we had trend change. Now, you, you know the trend change happens because of what? You don't have to wait for the green dots to fire, per se. You're going to get a red dot that fires, I mean, dots that fire higher. That means you're getting a, a flip to the other side. So it flips to the other side. Um, I'd love to see when these flip to see an arrow here, never qualified. Um, but then it got us into this move up. And that's when these are automatically fired here on the, you got an FCR right into a, a 3 o'clock. And then it goes right into momentum. And this is what I'm talking about right here, is that this is a pattern that it, it, is really nice because you go from an FZR trade, and this is the pattern I'm talking about. You come up, right? You came down. You came down for a V bottom. You come up. You set a higher low, and you get an arrow from a higher low that's really close close in proximity to your FZR. If that happens, you'll see these extended pop moves like this. This is a higher low, and you'll see it like this. You'll see it come into an FZR, and um, like I said, that's what, uh, good job Leo and Derek this morning catching that. That was a beautiful trade. It tanked. Nice move. Uh, but uh, that is what is called going from an FZR into a momentum. This momentum it goes back into FCR, FCR, and so on. So then we come down, we flip over again. We flip to the downside. Uh, now it's around 315. 
These are all the arrows that automatically fired. And we come into a momentum setup. And then we come into a full retracement setup, momentum setup. Uh, what's the low of that bar? 82 and 3 quarters, low potential of 79 and so. And then it just tanks. And we get this huge uh, FZR that formed. Now this is once again, here's an FZR into a momentum setup. Here is a rejection at the ATR. And then we get the... Uh, the, the momentum because it doesn't get above. So you can see from the trades since 2 o'clock after the news, you can see the pattern a little bit. It's pretty ch it's choppy. Really, the after the market opened up at 2 o'clock, it pretty much ended where it, uh, where it opened up at. But you can go with the, the, the zone. You can go with those two trade setups, full zone. And this is crazy volatility, chop up and down. But the one thing you'll notice is that, you know, these arrows, when they automatically fire, you can, you can see that they're only FZR and momentum setups. That's it. They're only momentum and FZR trades. There's no other setup that's combined in this setup. I mean, that is making these fire. So when you see that, you're going to understand that that's why they fire. Now, if you go to, if you go to different time frames, Let's say that you want to go to, um, uh, you want to fire on a larger time frame like this, right? Uh, so you want to see them fire at the larger time frame and get moving, but you want more momentum set up. So let's say that you see the market just cranking down at the close, uh, since 2.45 off of, and wait, let me make it longer there. You see the market cranking down since, what, 3, 3.13. So it caught momentum and it caught an FZR, right? How can you capture this then? What a lot of traders are doing, they're emailing me back and forth, how they're having success, and this is something we talk about all the time too, is you can use a larger time frame that's just cranking down that is, let's say, below, a larger time that's below 20. That means the market's in extreme weakness. If it's extreme weakness, you can use smaller time frames to fire in, um, to fire in FCR trades. So, I mean, uh, momentum trade. So now what you can do, you can actually have, uh, if you're trading plan, say, hey, I want to let the larger time frame set it up, but then I, I want to look for smaller, I, I want to look for entries between 15.13 to 15.30. You know, I, I want to try to find uh, trade setups that are going to happen in between there. Well, you can do that, and you're using a larger you're using a larger time frame to catch the weakness of the market. It's all red. But then you can check down into smaller time frames. So then let's look at between 3 o'clock to 3.30. I mean, uh, what was that? 3.15. When it started rolling over. Yeah, about 15.15 to 15.30 all the way into the close, actually. So let's just take it around at 3.15. We look at smaller time frames. So what you can do is you can, these arrows will automatically fire. So here's 15, 15. Here's where the market started just tanking right here. Here's where it flipped over right there. It flipped over in your larger time frame, right? You can use the smaller time frames to fire the arrows automatically, whether you algo in or whether you want these arrows to fire off automatically because these will catch now the what? It will catch the momentum of the market. So this one is a 118.18. So if you use a larger time frame and you want to say, okay, I want to use a 118. So let's go back and take a look at this. I'll show you. This is the neat thing about this program is you can really tailor it to your trading style. Is so I just showed you on a larger time frame how it likes to get out of outside um, into my zone reverse. Reverse, reverse, reverse. I mean that's with uh, with extreme news too and it, it's catching these reversals. So that's a larger time frame, and then you cut your time frame down, and you say, okay, larger time frame is producing raw uh, negative uh, push to the downside. You can go to smaller time frames. And I'm going to show you how you can check this down even further. So now these arrows that are making the fire, it's going to show FCRs off of a smaller time frame and momentum setups off the smaller time frame. So as you move down and you move down lower, you can see that it's still checking down to the smaller time frame into the close, 
And so now you don't have to trade off that sm that big time frame. Is that since the last hour of trading, you can check down into the smaller time frame where these arrows are automatically fire for your possible setups because they're already pre-qualified because the algos already picked them up. And that's why these arrows on all FZR trades are fire and all Momos will fire. So you don't have to trade just because you're looking for signals off a larger time frame. You don't have to trade off those. You can actually let them come into the zone, get rejected. In other words, you can do this. You can let it come up into the zone off of a larger time frame, right? Get rejected out of that zone. So here's a larger time frame. Get rejected here and start rolling over. Negative. There's your negative. There's an arrow off a larger time frame. So this is at 1540. So after 1540, you can check down to smaller time frames and look for momentum setups. So anything after 1540, which would be there, this is where it rolled over off the larger time frame, right out of the zone. Now what you can do is you can check yourself down and chart trading these momentum setups. Because you're coming out of FZR, like I always say, the best trades are the FZR trades. The best momentum trades are after an FZR. So a strategy I like to look at, I like to see larger time frames confirm and come out of an FCR with a arrow that confirms that FCR is qualified. But instead of risking that capital trying to catch that top, I like to see it keep rolling down and catch that first because if this FCR is going to be a big one, it should keep rolling. I like to look for the first momentum arrows on smaller time frames. Now that's the one eighteen eighteen. I'm going to check it down even further for you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can check this down even further. But that's one strategy you can use. You can look for the FZR to come in off a larger time frame, and then off your small time frames, let the arrows fire for smaller stops. Now you can, um, if you're going to do that strategy, another thing I like to do, and traders have known about this since ever since I opened the room. I like first retracement trades after a cross. Um, a lot of you like doing this. So after your MAs cross, after you come out of an FCR, I look for this specific setup. I don't care what time frame I'm trading. I'll show you specifically, if you're a scalp trader, I'll show you time frames. It works on scalping. It works on position. It works on day trading. It's a beautiful technique. If you come out of FCR and you're coming, you're rolling outside of it, and this moving average crosses, you look for the first momentum arrow that fires. Right there. That should be your biggest move. And it's got to cross first, and this is any time frame that you choose. The lar If you choose larger time frames, when that cross happens, that first larger retracement, you're possibly looking at a big giant swing. So this, this swing should be the largest one after that MA crosses. After you come out of FCR, that's the key. You got to you got to come out of FCR qualified, and then the first arrow that fires off a smaller time frame, um, you're looking for that push. In other words, you'll want to see this. You'll want to see it come out out of the FCR. You'll want to see this come out. You want to see that red reversal bar. You actually want to see this oscillator uh, a larger time frame. You want to see it start cranking below. I want to see that cranking below right here. I want to see it cranking below 70 or 80. Get cranking below. So then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch this sweet spot right in here. I'm trying to catch this oscillator coming down to 20. All right. So I'm trying to catch this guy, and then it's possibly going to try to get oversold. So I'm trying to catch this move here off of a smaller time frame because it already confirmed that that zone held. And if that zone holds, that means your momentum setup has a high probability of chance of success off smaller time frames. So if you're rolling down here, your smaller time frames, you're looking to fire into those um, FCRs. And Thomas, that's something you talked about earlier. Uh, you emailed me about how you noticed how that happens off of a larger into a smaller. This gives you a little bit even better way to do it, Thomas, because now what you can do is you can qualify it by the first MA cross that crosses. After coming out at FZR, look for the first momentum off any time frame that's smaller. Now, you can keep checking this down. If you want to have smaller stops, let's check down to a smaller time frame. Let's keep going down. Let's check this out coming out FZR and just look at this strategy. So depending on your style of trading and what type of ticks you're looking for, 
um, you're going to get more setups as we come down. So if I'm coming down and I just come out, I so I just came out my FZR here. So my FZR just came out. So we're going to look at that uh, exact level it came out of. So it just came out of my FZR at this level. So the low of this bar, when it printed, it printed at 37.86. I mean 37.86 and a quarter. So 37.86 and a quarter. 37.86 and a quarter. 37.86 bar. I'm going to show you where you start looking for these things. 37.86 and a quarter would be there. All right. So this is when it first started printing right. 37.86 and a quarter. 15.40. So that close of that bar right there. So that's when the first bar of your larger time frame closed. Right? Right there. So that's all these bars are one bar on this time frame. So this one bar, that red reversal bar, right there. Let's see what time was that? 1542. 37.56. So hold on one second, I'll show you. 37.56. I was close in a little bit. Right there. So that's one bar. Okay, that's one candle. So this larger time frame, let me move this over here. Let me explain this side by side. It'd be a lot easier. Blurb it up. So that that right there is this one big giant bar. So this price action. On this smaller time frame, this is a this is this I can start learning how to do this with momentum. It's pretty neat. 11313, right? And this price action off of a larger time frame would use a 120, 20, 125, 25, 130, 30. I believe this is a 130, 30. Let me see. It's a 130, 30 Unirico bar. So once that 130, 30 confirmed, confirmed, this is a 130, 30. So all this price action. Moving up and down is this one red bar that closes right there, all right, with the arrow that fired. So that arrow fires, and that tells me this, that that confirmed at the low of this bar right there that I'm in a possible what? I'm in a possible move that's going to be hard down like this, all right? So instead of just selling this on a larger time frame, and getting filled at the low of this bar, which would be your fill would be, what, 85, and taking the risk of having a large stop because on Rinko bars, it's got to be the high, the swing high plus a couple ticks, right? So you're, you're risking that much if you just trade off a larger time frame. So way to do it is if this FZR is actually going to produce results that if you find a larger time frame you like, I, I like the 120. 25, 30. I wouldn't go larger than 135, 35. But if, if you're a position trader, I wouldn't go larger than that because you get a lot of big potential moves when the arrows fire. So once that forms, then we can check down to a smaller time frame and say, okay, let's check out the first momentum trade that happens. And what do we say? What, what I tell you about tweezers and momentum when they come up, you're probably going to get a fast move to that direction if the arrow fires right after the tweezer because it's telling me the momentum is coming in the market at the same time the tweezer is showing an indecision in price. And sure enough, right after, right after that bar closes on a larger time frame, you get your cross, your MA cross, and there's my arrow that automatically fires. This is a great possible setup right there. 83 and a quarter. I got as high as 84 and three quarters. You took very little heat. And 83 and three quarters all the way down to 67 on a smaller time frame. So now you got 83, 67, 16, 17 point S&P potential trading off a smaller time frame with a maximum 16, 17 tick using this time frame stop. So that's a lot of potential there to move out of an FCR using a smaller time frame. So once again, the first cross, that's usually the best one that you want to look at um, after coming out of an FCR in a larger time frame. So knowing this now, you're saying, well, how does that play into the auto then. If I know that if I want to use an auto then 
with my momentum only, then I can turn my auto on after I come out of a major FZR out of a larger time frame because I'm trying to catch a smaller, I mean, with small stops, I'm trying to catch that first move, that first cross, move up. Because these will not fire unless it's in moving average direction with the oscillator in the right direction, with my ATR in the right direction. It will not fire you in this trade. This error will not fire unless all those characteristics have been met. So you, then you say, well, can I go lower? The lower time frame you go, the more setups you're going to get. So as you can tell, if I get into this type of setup when I first cross, you got your first shot at your second shot. I don't really like taking them over and over again because they start, you know, your price action starts getting uh, dissipating. But one thing I do like off all these time frames is this, and I'm not, I, I can't, I'll tell you, talk to you blue in the face. These tweezers with the momentum, they are great continuation trades with low, low risk with high probability return. It comes down to it again, we get a deep retracement. What happens? You get a nice tweezer with the momentum off this time frame. And I love these setups. Once again, the potential on this was pretty big. 71 a quarter all the way down to what, 60, 11 a quarter on a small stop because you're in a smaller time frame. Once again, that's the type of price action you're going to get. What you can't do if you trade off smaller time frames is start getting things like this. You can't get these when the moving hours are big wide mouth and they're wide open. You know, you got to be near the retracement on the FCR or the first cross than the retracement. That's the best momentum coming out of an FCR cross first retracement or coming up to the FCR. It's already crossed tweezer continuation. All right. I love the tweezer continuation tweezer. Here it is. This just happened to be on the first cross. So you can do that. So this is a one. So I always say. The Uni Rinko, a 113 13, it says, you know, you should not put your stop less, no matter what, than what Rinko you're trading. So if you're an Uni Rinko, 113 13, and listen, the best way to do this is try it on the micros. The micros are one tenth of the big contract. If you can't make money on the micros, you're not going to make money on the big contract. Don't fool yourself. It's the same price action. Don't risk monies in your account until you get the rhythm of this thing. But I say once you start, if you paper trade this, if you're new to it, you start making consistent money on it. Then you go to the micros, and then you can go to the big contract when you consistently prop on a week-to-week, -week, month to month basis. But the micros are great when trading strategies like this because you're taking a lot less risk, but you still get punch, and uh, your margin requirements are much, much lower also in the micros. All right? So that's the 13.13. But let's say you want to do this. You want to look for these first cross trades out of the FCR zone because these FCR zones, they're, they're, they're pretty crazy accurate. I mean, you guys see them. I can go, you know, all the way back in the beginning of the day. Uh, oh, there we go. So we'll go to the midnight. You know, we'll, we'll go midnight. These FCR zones are crazy, crazy uh, accurate. We've all seen it. Those at least the program. The reason I use larger time frames is this. It gets your mind right. If you think you can come in and trade, trade price action, let me show you this, and this will really hit it home with you, a lot of you guys. If I look at this price action here, now watch. If I go all the way back since the market opened at midnight. Go all the way back to midnight. Oops, sorry, what was it? Go all the way back to midnight, right? This is where at midnight. And I'm trading through, and this is till 12.30. So that right there alone, that's uh, from midnight to 12, right? So that's 12 hours of trading. Do you, do you have your mind right what you're trying to do? Yes. I'm trying to buy this FCR. I'm trying to sell this FCR, sell the FCR, sell the FCR, sell the FCR, sell the FCR. Look how, how neat this is, how it comes up on larger time frames, right into the zone. That's why the software is so powerful. This is a 130.30. I would not go higher than a 135.35. If you go to 35, let me just show you, it gets a little bit too much. Uh, um, it gets a little bit too much. Um, I mean, too little retracement, sorry. So uh, the 135.35, then you're looking for price action. Let's go back. We'll go through a little bit. But it still, it still gets your mind right. It's just, I wouldn't go higher than this. I still like this because 
if I get into my zone, I can see when my arrow fires to look for smaller momentum set up on smaller time frames. Here's an arrow that fired. Look for sell. Look for sell. Look for a buy. Look for a buy. You know, um, then the news comes out, right? Never trade this. We talked about that. And then it gets your mind right. Look at this. Off the larger time frame, get your mind right. You better look for longs right here. At 14 and 30 seconds, you better get your mind right and you look for momentum set off on smaller time frames. Whatever smaller time frame you want, I'll even show you smaller. 113, 13, a 118, 18. You should be looking to get this right here. Then we get the retracement off this larger time frame and the arrow automatically fires. Let's get back into this and let's play this up. But notice how your mind's right the whole time because I can skinny this down all the way since midnight. And I know all the way into the close. Let me skin this down the close, the whole, the whole day. See if I can do it. I don't know if I can even do it. It's not going to love me because it's – but let's just go through here. But let's, let's, let's just look at it at this. We know that we're looking for sell zones. News comes out. Nothing here, right? We can get the, retra get the retracement. Doesn't get an arrow, so no. Then we get the pullback arrow fired right there off the larger time frame. Look for buy, 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 buy. Get the pullback. Look for arrow, buy, 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 right? This is infancy of the move. Pullback buy, pullback buy in smaller time frames. And then look what it does at the close. No arrows, no arrows, still no arrows. So it voided all these arrows in here, all this chop off the larger time frame. Voided all this chop, no arrows fired at all. And then look what it does. It said, listen, let's get short this market on the nice push at 11.30, then it says let's get long, 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 and then short all the way into the close. Well, short here, back up, back down. So what I'm saying is I wouldn't go past this. This is this is my extreme level that 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 you should look at. That in my in my when I'm educating you guys, 135, 35 would be the extreme. If you want to check down to lower, check down to lower. When I, when I consider a longer time frame, it's 20 to 35. Any, any Uni Rinko bar, a 120, 20 to 135, 35. That, that really gets your mind right, right? So that's going to help you look for these swings in the market without just staring at a smaller time frame. Then what you can do is after you get a time frame that you like, that where these arrows automatically fire, then, then you can tell yourself, okay, I see when these larger time frames are firing, right? Uh, you know, when they fire here, here, wherever. So when they fire here, I'm trying then, I'm trying to do what? I'm trying to get the middle. I'm trying to get this momentum here off a smaller time frame because my larger time frame is confirming the move up. I'm not trying to catch, I'm not trying to trade off of a 35 or a 30 because your stops are going to be 40 ticks or 35 ticks. That's not how I want to do it. I want to try to trade this. I'm going to try to trade this momentum and then try to get into smaller time frames, right? So using FCR as a momentum. So if you do that, right, and you do that and you get into these moves down, so let's get into these moves down then here. So we see that we can trade off the first cross with momentum using a smaller time frame. So this is a 113.13. And if I'm trading a smaller time frame, I wouldn't go – uh, higher than a 118.18. Here's your 118.18. You see how the trades don't come up as much. But there's your first cross. It's more accurate because it's looking for a larger move. This is a big move. Potential 80 down to 60, which is a 20-point S&P point move. That's 80 ticks of potential, 18. But look when you start checking down. Now watch this. This will get your mind right on how to do this. If I go down to 13, here, let's go. So there's one two, three, possible four into the close. It's trying to roll over after six o'clock opens back up. It's trying to give a sell signal right now um, when six opens back up. But then we'll go down to 13. Now what we're looking at is we're looking at more trades. So one, two, three, four. Now one, two, three, four. Don't take these because they're wide. Five, six, seven, eight, not. But look what happens. You start the smaller time frames. You got to be very careful then, because now you're getting these ones where the moving averages are wide, and this is what I don't like about small time frames using this momentum as your entry. If you get away from the MA, 
and you can see them, you start getting away from the MA, and you're not selling them on retracements, right? Meaning first cross, these are the best ones with tweezers, with tweezer after a full retracement, tweezer, tweezer with an arrow, or this one, right, in the first retracement. My point of view is this. I want to educate you how to do this. When you start checking below 118.18, you've got to be sure that you are looking for a cross, first retracement, or an error with tweezers, right, or near an FCR to let it fire. I would stay away from these guys, right? Stay away from those guys. Now, let's go lower. Let's keep going lower for scalpers that want to try to trade this. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'll go all the way down to 144 in a second. So, I said the best ones are the first cross after coming out of an FZR zone. So, if you see that a trade is fired, it's going to be the same thing. You're looking for one tweezer arrow. So it's the same thing, just because it's a smaller time frame doesn't matter. That is my setup right here. My cherry pick setup would be the tweezer where it's showing that it's a possible continuation to the downside. That one would be your best one out of all of them because it's a tweezer with my air of the fire. It's off a very small time frame, right, on a momentum setup. So that's what you can do if you're mainly entering the trades. So if you look for the first cross, the same thing. If I first cross over out of an FZR, you can use smaller time frames. The first one is the best. So you can see the more, and I, I've got all FZRs and Momos on here, by the way, showing all of them. You don't have to have these many areas on here, but I'm showing you how you can cherry pick them. If you go down to, let's say, a 155, you want, let's say you want really small stops. You want an 8-tick stop, right? And you're like, okay, well, let me go with an 8-tick stop out of FZR. Let me try to get the first cross retracement. You can still do that. You just don't want to take any arrows unless you're coming out of FCR, right, or tweezer trades. So if you take tweezer trades, it's like this. You know, tweezer trades with the arrow that automatically fires. These are the trades you're going to take. Your stop is very, very small now. You're talking about an eight tick stop. The entry is a small, the low of this bar. So 66 and three quarters. It's still got as low as 60 for six points. But you can see... Once you start getting into smaller time frames, the, the moves are less pronounced. But once again, if you, that's a first cross trade and a tweezer, but the best ones are outside of an FZR. So if you get up into an FZR trade right here, so I'm coming out of the, out, out of the zone, right? So I'm coming out of the FZR zone, and I'm looking for the first cross retracement off a small time frame. There it is. So now if I'm a scalper and I'm like, that's, I don't care about these arrows. They mean nothing to me because I'm trying to catch, I'm trying to catch this. I'm trying to catch the first cross outside of a zone, I mean outside of FZR, and you can use smaller time frames that way. So that's how you can do smaller time frames. What, what I like to do is, the, I use a, I show a 20, 120-20 and a 113-13 in the room because they're really nice. We can even go larger if you want on our larger time frame. But these are real nice because you don't get a lot of setups that come up that fire off in the room. But when they do fire, you get these nice pronounced moves. I mean, these are nice pronounced moves here that fire off. But it doesn't mean you have to trade off of a 2020. Because if you trade off a 2020, a 120, that means your stop's going to have to be what? That's got to be at least 20. Even though these moves are they're huge, they're, uh, huge potential. I mean, that's 71 down to... What, 60? It's an 11-point move there. I mean, they're not small moves when they hit. 76 here, down to, what, almost 10 points there again. So my point is you can look for the larger time frame on a FZR because these arrows automatically fire. That's why in the room what I did is I put these guys to fire only momentum setup. So these, these are what fired today for all you room traders. So these fired. So when this fired at 1550, Right, and this fired up here inside the zone. So after 1537, you know, you could check down to a smaller time frame off of a 113.13, and then you can look for these sell setups going into, um, you know, into the close. That we show 113.13. That's a 30. Let me bring it back down. But 
That way you can see when the possible minimum minimum is coming in the market. So if I'm trading off of 113.13 today and it's at 15.46 and I, I know at 15.50 is the time of day trade because 15.50 they like to push it for institutional traders and I know that these are the two best setups. So the, my two best setups are what? I like my tweezer right here, my tweezer with my arrow. Love that trade. Big potential with a small stop. 71 a quarter, a potential all the way down to 60. That's almost, what, 9, 10 points. And then this is a first cross outside of an FZR with my tweezer. And then you got 63 and a quarter all the way down. So, you know, you can customize how you want to look at larger time frame versus smaller. So I've got in the room, I show a 120.20. But hey, you could do this. You could say, hey, I want to go... I want to go larger. I want to go 130.30 instead of your 120.20 is you have in the room. And I I want to do this. And then I want to jack this up to 18, half of that, because I don't want a lot of arrows on momentum. So then what you're doing is you're qualifying a larger time frame, but you're entering off of a smaller time frame. And then what you can do is that when you see these come up into the zone, these FCRs would have you off these larger time frames. And it's just rolling over, right? It's all red. And you don't have to even go that large and go back down to, you can even go down to a 25 or a 20. I like showing 25, but I'm just showing you, you don't have to stick to what I show you in the room. You, you, can, you can see the momentum off these larger time frames, and then you can check yourself down into smaller time frames with smaller stops. And that would be, that helps you out because it shows you that, uh, it shows you the momentum off a larger time frame is pushing the market. And since it's pushing the market, you know, here this is pushing the market. So 25, 25, that's, a, that's an extreme MOMO at 1545. So now you know I'm coming out of an FCR. I'm coming out of a zone. I got the arrow fires off a large time frame at 1545. I have another one at 1550. That, this is when the institutions like to push the market one direction. So at 1550 and 1545 my large my large time frame. So now I know... My small check down at 1545 right here, at 1545, this right here off that time frame said this is a qualified FCR. So this is a qualified FCR. This just got qualified because I'm coming out of a larger time frame. So now that's when that one bar just prints right there, right? So what I always educate everyone with, that momentum comes out after it, the zone has confirmed. So now the first cross happened here, right? Your first cross happened there. So I always educate traders the first retracement is the best with the what now? Now you got it with momentum. So that arrow is the best entry going into the close. And it has to be a 1550 and it's huge potential, uh, 80 all the way down to 60, 20 S&P points in 10 minutes. Or not 10 minutes, or was it uh, about 15 minutes? So my point is, is it that qualified it, though, coming out of the FCR, right? So, but you don't have to do that. You need to check it down further. You're saying, okay, well, at 1545, I want to go even smaller. So you can dictate what time frame, depending on putting your risk, uh, outside the zone. So now I'm at 1545. That's my qualified zone that closed right here. So it closed off the larger time frame here. And look what happens right after that using a what? Using a 113.13. What's my favorite trade? The tweezer with the momentum arrow. I absolutely love this setup. Fires right at that swing. And there's my other tweezer on the 113.13 right after my qualified. Because remember, on the 125.25, the 113.13, this time he bars that form in between there. See that? Tick, 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 tick. And then it stopped forming that one bar that closed red. So your first cross retracement's right there. It's a very small stop, and you can look for a pronounced move. You want to check it down further? Check it down further. Then you got, you got to make sure if you, if you go lower in your lower time frames, we even go down to 188. Let's say 188 so you can have 11 tick stop. So let's say a 188, and you're saying, okay, I'm on a larger time frame, confirm the FZR, because I'm looking for the first full retracement, and there it is. 
right there's your eight now you're really getting a nice little fill with small stops you don't care about any of these arrows that precede it you're looking for that first outside of the FZR for large time frame there's your entry your entry is 70 or 84 and a half and your stop uh, would be 11 to 12 ticks uh, because you're using an eight and you can say oh, well yeah I can even go further I want to go down to a one let's say a 144 where I have a seven or six tick stop uh, based upon coming out of FZR. That's my point. If you scalp, you can adjust this to being scalping, or if you're a position trader, you can adjust the scalping. So if I go back, I can see it right here. That's when the full the bar fully formed. It took that many candles using a 144 for one 125.25. This many candles. Up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. The first cross, then you can look after it closes, it closes right here. So now that closes, the arrow formed over on the 125.25. I got my moving average across. I'm looking for the first arrow. I don't care about any of these arrows afterwards because I'm looking for the first arrow to do it. And I'm actually doing this in the auto program. There's going to be a toggle switch that looks for the first cross of the MA and the first retracement qualified arrow outside of an FCR. It's only going to print those arrows for you in the indicator. I'm actually programming that now to let you know. Because uh, a lot of you traders like that first retracement, but now you're on a you're in a one four four, and that tells you right there that that's your spot. Now, like I said, for a lot of traders that want slow price action, bring it back up, bring it back up. I don't care to even a one fifteen fifteen or one eighteen eighteen. I like the one eighteen eighteen myself. One fifteen fifteen, you know, bring it back up. Now you're looking at the same type of price action though, but you're looking for less retracements. Now. On a 115.15, slows it down considerably now, doesn't it? Because now that's my first qualified FCR outside the zone. There's your cross. There's your first arrow. There's your entry. You want to slow it down further? Fine. Just bring it down into a higher one. But you get my point. You see when you can turn turn these on, and you can use you can use a larger time frame and a smaller time frame. So what I've done essentially is I've I'm, I'm showing all the SERs on any time frame and all the momentum trades on any time frame, right? But I'm showing you how you can use a larger time frame that fires all the FZRs and all the momentum trades all on one chart. So then you can have a larger time frame and a smaller time frame and just trade off of one right beside each other. Now, how can you do the auto then? The auto can be adjusted based upon that. So the auto is going to adjust trades based upon that um, you know that entry. So let's see where's the auto. So if I go auto, so what I've done is is here's how you can do it. You can toggle the switch on and off based upon. Let's so so let's say you go into, into an FZR on a larger time frame and you're starting to roll over and you got your auto here. You're ready to go and you want to get into this one or what have you, you can, you can actually, um, uh, what's going to happen is when you toggle that on, it's going to start producing trades based upon um, whatever criteria that you put into it and what errors that you selected. So what, what you can do is when you get into the auto, it will show, um, it, it will show you what, if you're taking momos and also zone trades together. So the zones and trades, and we're, once again, we're an hour in this thing already, but um, I'm going to show you how you can, um, you can go zone or not zone. In other words, I'm going to show you, you can click on these arrows. These arrows will come up automatically with zone and the FCRs together, or they can come up, um, or they come up by themselves. So that's something I guess we we'll have to do again. Actually, I just had to show you a larger time frame versus smaller time frame. Um, I'm working on getting this out to everybody. Uh, uh, at, you know, the new update. So all members will get this new update. The, the new update will fire the Momos in. The Momos already done. Um, I'm actually adding uh, the arrows to be bigger and smaller. I'm Almost done with the first wave and second wave, but the one thing I am adding that you're going to have, see I added Momo in here already with the toggle switch. Um, I am adding a, um, 
I am adding the uh, the first cross the cross. So after we come out of this, the first cross come out, and I'm adding the tweezer also. So you can you can there's going to be a toggle switch for the tweezer, and the reason I'm doing that is is that the tweezers are very very effective. Uh, they will show trades like I said like this, and they will have to um, the tweezer will have to occur. Um, it will have to occur outside of the zone after the first um, FZR that comes in at FCR retracement. The tweezer will have to fire um, with an arrow. So in other words, let's say you click tweezer by itself. It's not going to take any arrow trades unless this trade right here. So let's just go through the trading deck, and we're going to mark these trades up. Let's say you want tweezer trades with the arrow in conjunction with my ATR, period. And it's got to, and it has to be a momentum setup. So these are the trades that we'll take according to that. It's going to take that one. You can cherry pick which ones you want to take. I'm going to take that one. And it will only show these arrows if you toggle switch on. on. It's got to have an arrow with the tweezer. It doesn't take very many of them because they are continuation momentum. It's going to take that one. This one was a big one because look at that move. Huge with the trailing stop. That was a massive one. You can see I love these tweezers with the arrow. They are massive potential. You catch them, you catch some of those. They are beauty. Here's another one. It will pick that one. So I'm having this as a toggle switch also for you guys. And it works on all time frames. Uh, here's one. It just never qualified. But it was with the ATR. I do take these, by the way, manually if the arrow doesn't fire, but you guys don't have to. Uh, so you can see they don't come up too often. Where are you at, my tweezer? Right there's another one. That one didn't qualify. So you can see they don't come up too often. The continuation is that one did not qualify. It came up. There's another one. So this is just since 2 o'clock. So you get my point. But it's, it works on all time frames. It's not just one time frame. Um, you can see these, but the algo is positioned to take these. Let's see if we have any more. I'm getting to look through them. Let's see. There's one without the arrow. Hold on one second. There's one. Caught the buy set up. That's right after 2 o'clock. We'll take this one. They're continuation trades. But the arrow has to come with it. They'll take this one. Here's a huge trade. The two big big ones is this big long and big short. Look at that long with the trail. Jesus. As it's uh, after 30 seconds, that's 14 and 37 seconds. You turn that sucker on. That's something you can think about too is you can turn the tweezers on with news. Because uh, look at that big run. Holy smoke. That's, that's a good one. That and that big short. Where's that big short? Or was that sucker? Anyway, so but the it, the arrow's got to come with that. So that's time frame you can do. You can utilize it with that specific time frame right there. Uh, there, there's another one. Here's another one. You can see just on one time frame, it's a nice little setup. It's got to be with ATR. The ones that don't work is without ATR, and you will get smoked on this setup. It's got to be with ATR. ATR setup. And it has to have the momentum error. Here's another one. It's got to be with the arrow. If the arrow doesn't fire with it, you do not touch it because it's just a standard doji, and those do not work. There's another buy. So you can see they come up. It's I mean, We've had, what, six or seven of them so far? It's not even 1 o'clock yet. Here, hold on. There's another one. Nice big move. There's another one. Nice move. Another one, two back to back, nice move. So you get my point, but that's off. But that's just off this time frame. Remember, this is this is off of a one thirteen thirteen. It doesn't matter uh, on the algo. You can go. Let's say you said I want to only look for tweezers um, off of the larger time frame and with an arrow. You know, then you're not going to get very many of them. So you're just looking for them to fire off. Uh, um, when, when it comes, there's one, there's a big one. 
but the moves are pronounced. They're not small S&P point moves. These are pretty big pronounced moves. See, this is a big, these are not small moves on this time frame. This is a 63 and three quarter potential to 73. That's 10 S&P points. That's 40 ticks. These are not, here's another big move. Look at this one, this time frame. 55 all the way down to, that was 14 S&P uh, points. Here's another one. It looks small, but it's not. The auto will fire in. This is 63 all the way down to 58. And then, you know, so you can go, you can go larger time frames with it. Uh, there's another big one um, off the larger 90 potential all the way to 99. It was 10 S&P points. Um, should have caught the one right after news too, right there. So you see my point. So I'll have a toggle switch on that on the, as far as the auto goes. So I'm just going to call it one word. I'm going to call it tweezer. It's going to be a tweezer trade with momentum, you know, then I'm going to have momentum and then the FCRs. So the tweezer is what it is. It's just a momentum trade with an arrow. I mean, it's just a momentum trade with a tweezer, right? And then I will have one for first retracement trades. That will be a toggle switch also. Uh, that's the, the stop line will be the amount of ticks that you put in. It'll be a hard stop. Whatever stop you put in, it'll be a hard stop. 